Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 27th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to try and dispel a degree of fear, uncertainty, and doubt that has been spread over the issue of a halt in fossil fuel burning. And this is nam namely over the issue of what occurs if you halt fossil fuel burning and subsequently remove the production of light reflecting and radiation reflecting aerosols from the Earth's atmosphere. I just want to show you this particular graph again from Zeke Hostfather, which shows the net present warming in the range of 1.1 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages and the aerosol negative effect of about negative 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 degrees Celsius cooling. So it's worth noting that with the aerosol negative effect in this range, without the masking effect of aerosols, all things being equal, present warming would be in the range of about 1.5 degrees Celsius if you stop producing aerosols and if you stop burning fossil fuels. So I'd just like to add that all things are not equal. The, the climate change ball is basically a, a moving factor and a constantly changing factor. And the halt of fossil fuel burning has an amazing overall net positive when it comes to preventing future warming. I'm, I'm going to talk about that a bit more. But before I do, I'd just like to talk about coal, which is the primary producer of aerosols as well as the greatest producer out of all three of the sources of fossil fuels of greenhouse gas emissions. And it's worth noting that coal has been contributing to human forced climate change since the middle 19th century and is presently producing on the order of about 15 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions every year. Presently, continued fossil fuel burning, according to the IPCC, by the end of this century, will result in a 4.2 degrees Celsius increase in global temperature. Now, that's a business as usual track that include continued fossil fuel burning from all sources, such as oil, gas, and coal. And if you halt that fossil fuel burning, you end up with a greatly reduced amount of warming overall. So just as a comparison basis, 4.2 degrees Celsius versus 0 0.4 degrees Celsius is an order of magnitude greater warming produced by fossil fuel burning than masked by reflective particles such as aerosols. Looking more specifically at coal, the present or as of December 31st, 2014, estimated global coal reserves. And it's worth noting that these reserves change based on how much exploration is undertaken on a global basis. So the size of the actual coal reserve is likely quite a bit larger than this. But just based on this estimate of 1.2 trillion tons of coal, you end up, if you burn all that coal, with a approximately total amount of coal so considering the fact that if you burn one ton of coal, you end up with 2.6 tons of carbon dioxide. So if you burn all the pr presently estimated coal reserves, you end up with 3.5 trillion tons of carbon dioxide added to the Earth's atmosphere, which is equivalent to 90 years of the present human carbon emission. And so by itself, that would be enough to raise an atmospheric carbon dioxide levels to above 800 parts per million in total. And, and that estimated level would be enough to warm the Earth system by about four degrees by itself over a one century time scale, according to Earth, I'm sorry, equilibrium climate sensitivity estimates. And by about eight degrees Celsius, all by itself, according to Earth system sensitivity estimates, which estimate total changes to the Earth system over the course of 
hundreds of years to multiple millennia. So burning all the coal results in quite a bit more warming in the, in the range of an order of magnitude or times 10 or times 20 more warming than cessation of coal burning produces by removing reflective aerosols from the Earth's atmosphere. Now, just to add a few more points about the potential regenerative effects of the Earth system if you halt fossil fuel emissions early, is that one, a number of carbon emissions that we produce through processes such as extracting coal. So for example, when you mine coal, you end up with a, a degree of methane emissions or extracting natural gas. For example, when you frack the earth or when you pipe natural gas, you end up with a chunk of methane emissions. So if you halt fossil fuel burning, you halt that source of a short-lived greenhouse gas. Now, the average lifespan of methane in the atmosphere is about eight years. So, and, and as we can see from this chart provided by the IPCC, methane in and of itself is the, the second largest source of radiative forcing from a greenhouse gas perspective. So if you reduce the net flux of a short-lived greenhouse gas, then unless the Earth system itself is producing more methane, then you end up with a net reduction in total atmosphere, atmospheric methane over time. It's also worth noting that nitrous oxide is also shorter lived than carbon dioxide. Uh, nitrous oxide has about a 214 year atmospheric lifespan, whereas carbon dioxide's net effect lasts for 500 years or more. And in addition, changes to industry to reduce car chlorofluorocarbon emissions can also reduce a number of short-lived chlorofluorocarbons. So, so just simply halting fossil pr fuel production and related industrial greenhouse gas production in and of itself can reduce the net forcing of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere to a certain extent potentially counteracting the effect of loss of aerosols. In addition, halting fossil fuel burning in and of itself redu reduces the CO2 pressure on carbon sinks like the ocean or on forests, and you can get a bit of a burst in carbon drawdown from the ocean system and from forests, particularly if you rejuvenate the land systems of the earth and work to rejuvenate uh, the carbon drawdown potential of those systems. So, so a net halt in fossil fuel burning produces the greatly prevented range of warming in the future. Just from coal alone, prevented four to eight degrees Celsius warming if you burn all the coal. And if you're looking at all fossil fuels, you're looking at preventing in the range of about 15 degrees Celsius long-term warming at, on a very long scale if you burn all the fossil fuels, all the known reserves, and all the potential reserves. So, so halting fossil fuel burning is a big deal when it comes to preventing future warming. And the loss of aerosols in and of itself, though concerning, and though certainly something that we need to look at as it relates to short-term risk and medium-term risk to the Earth system due to human-forced warming, is not the major driver. So I I urge you not to fall prey to fear, uncertainty, and doubt surrounding the issue of a necessary halt in fossil fuel burning. The only way to deal with the crisis that is human forced climate change is to stop emitting greenhouse gases into the Earth's atmosphere. And the aerosol effect in and of itself is not going to produce a situation of a scale any near comparable to the situation that is produced by continuing fossil fuel burning. And the last thing to remember is that halting fossil fuel burning sooner produces more positive impact for prevented cooling. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.